very fortunate today to have a gentleman uh, to talk with us who lives in this neighborhood a few miles away in nearby Berkeley. His name is Alan Steck, and he with Steve Roper uh, were the recipients last night of the American Alpine Club's Literary Award. Uh, Steve was not uh, present. He's in New Zealand, I understand, Alan, but we're glad that uh, you were here, and congratulations. On well, thank you very much. Yeah, Steve uh, left him, uh, two weeks ago, actually. He has a uh, period of uh, a vacation opportunity because his wife is on sabbatical, so they decided to, to go to New Zealand. Not a bad choice for this winter. S sounds period, like yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Um, Alan, we want to talk to you about uh, a number of things. He's one of the great uh, Yosemite climbers. I guess that I'm sure that many people, uh, as I did when I started climbing, one of the first books that I saw after Royal Robbins uh, uh, basic rock craft and advanced rock craft was The 50 Classic Climbs of North America. It's a wonderful book. Uh, what year did it come out? Well, that was, um, uh, I think we started uh, working on it in, uh, in the late 70s. I guess it, I, th I have this number in my, in this date in my mind, it's 79, 79, but I've kind of, uh, uh, I'm having trouble with chronology these days. But well, so it's been out anyway. quite a while. It's, it's a great book. Now, you and Steve decided to, of all of the climbs, in uh, this country, you just you chose those. How'd you go about it? Doing. Well, let me say, let me also tell you how it started. Uh, Steve was in the uh, service, and I get this letter from Vietnam. You know, and and uh, this is back, of course, uh, quite uh, maybe ten years before we actually got it in print. But he says, Alan, we've got to do this book, and so it was his idea to put together this compendium. And uh, I can imagine that. Uh, uh, once we started making lists of climbs, it, it took uh, maybe two or three years to massage it. Let's use that verb, because uh, things, I mean, climbs came and went. It's kind of interesting how we felt about, about this list as it, as it changed over the years. And our criteria, uh, we had maybe four items. It had to be good climbing, it had to, each route had to uh, be uh, to be a classic that had to be uh, striking from afar. I mean, there were a couple of others that I uh, won't mention now, but uh, there uh, it only took one of the five to make it a classic. Let's say some routes are, are beautiful from afar, and the climbing is superb, and uh, it's uh, they get climbed a lot. Another route might be beautiful, beautiful from afar, but not get climbed very often. I've been kidded uh, unmercifully about a route we put in on Hummingbird Ridge on Mount Logan. Uh, Thirty years ago, we climbed it, and it hasn't been repeated. You know, so they say well, that can't be a classic. You know, and so I say, well, it's beautiful from afar. So that's uh, it's, a great, it's a great route. It's a yeah. beautiful thing, beautiful climbing, but it just hasn't worked out for the parties that have tried it. To go back a little farther, how did <coughs> you and Steve? get together in Yosemite? Well, uh, I was working uh, since 19, uh, since the early 50s at a, uh, a, a mountaineering backpacking shop in Berkeley. And uh, I met Steve through that association. He was a customer and he's about 14 years my junior. So uh, he uh, was pretty young when I first came across him. And but anyway, we've had a great association over the years. And uh, he worked at the ski hut for a while. and. We did a guide to Pinnacles National Monument together once, which he wrote, actually, we published. So uh, I've known him for quite a long time. And uh, <coughs> Where did you start climbing? In, uh, I started in Berkeley. In Berkeley? <coughs> Excuse me. I, uh, when I came back from the service in 19, let's see, I was uh, discharged in 46, I guess. And uh, it was that year that I found uh, the Sierra Club. And you may recall that uh, they used to, the Sierra Club had uh, rock climbing sections. It was then primarily a California conservation organization. It's now grown considerably since those days, back in the uh, 40s. Right. 
But they had uh, rock climbing sections, and quite by chance, I, uh, I found this. I was 20 years old. I had no idea that people climbed. I knew about mountains. My father had shown me mountains, and I had actually climbed some minor peaks in the Sierra, but I didn't know about uh, uh, technical climbing, using equipment and where you need special shoes and all that sort of thing. So that's how it started. Who were some of the people was, uh, who were around when you first started climbing in Yosemite? Well, um, the people who did the original ascents were still around. They weren't climbing as much. Dick Leonard's name you know, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. A lawyer in San Francisco he, uh, at that time. David Brower, I remember uh, David Brower would come out occasionally uh, at the local. We were climbing locally in, in Berkeley. Places like Indian Rock, which is very famous now, and uh, Cragmont. When David, uh, just parenthetically, is sort of the daddy rabbit of the Sierra Club and one who took it, I guess, nationally and AC. He helped to make it into a national organization, that's quite true. And, uh, well, we all know what, he, what he's done throughout his life, but at this time when I met him, he was still teaching climbing. He taught me a few things, and I remember, locally. I never climbed with him in the valley or any, on any serious uh, climbing adventure. We had, uh, there were very few people in those days who uh, were going to Yosemite. If you remember in Royal's talk, I think he started coming maybe uh, about the early 50s, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And we started there in 19, probably in 47, was probably the first time I actually did a real climb in Yosemite Valley. Do you remember what it was? Well, it might have been the ascent of Pulpit Rock, perhaps. Uh, I have no idea what it's like now, but then it was an aid climb and I was learning, we were learning how to use pitons, my friends and I. You can uh, kind of imagine there, there's, no, there's no body of people to, who can help you learn these things. There were a few people who were more experienced, but they were, they were out doing their thing, right? They weren't teaching. So uh, there was a fellow by the name of Fletcher Hoyt, whose father was a doctor in, uh, Berkeley, I think, and he and I uh, became good friends, and we did a lot of climbing together and uh, learning experiences together as well. And uh, learning to, uh, pitons is a uh, is a tricky business. You've got to be careful, and particularly if you don't have anybody around to guide you. So we kind of stumbled our way, you know, through those years, 47, 48, and did some new routes and. Uh, with the equipment that we had, which was very minimal. I'm th uh, people keep asking me, what, what actually did we have in 1948, let's say? Uh, well, I suspect it was only uh, just very uh, uh, ordinary pitons, probably very narrow, I mean thin. The only angle that we had was the army angle, which was probably a half-inch angle piton. You know those long army angles, remember mm -hmm. those? that they used uh, in training the mountain troops. Wonderful Yosemite exhibit here. Uh, uh, you've seen it, yeah, right. Yeah. We had one on exhibit down there, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that was our, that was our rack, you know. In, in mm -hmm. your book, The 50 Classics, uh, refresh my memory or tell us, uh, I know that you have the Salathe uh, route, is that correct? Uh, the Salathe Wall route is in right. there. That's a route that Royal Robbins climbed right. in 1962, uh, I believe. Now, isn't the the Royal Ar Royal Arches also one of that's one of our classics no, too? One I've done. Right. Uh, is there another nose? Is the nose? Is there the nose is also there? Yes, the nose and uh, oh my goodness, the arrow tip. I don't think we included. The